The workshop is essentially about uh, exchange of information between Africa and Asia in terms of conservation and management of great apes. And it, it was kind of born out of a workshop that we had in Masindi in Uganda last year, organised by the International Institute of uh, Environmental and Development, who are based in London. And I was invited to go along and give a sort of general overview of the orangutan situation uh, in Asia, just for a, from a different perspective. And one thing that became clear from the workshop was that there are incredible synergies, but also differences between the way great apes are managed and conserved in, on both continents. And what we thought was we bring together African practitioners and policy makers to Asia um, and with their counterparts from Asia, sit down and we discuss issues related to lessons learned, if you like, from, from best practices in, in Africa, for example, ecotourism is much more developed in Africa, um, and compared to the situation in Asia where the orangutan um, uh, co conflict, if you like, is somewhat sensitive, but also very pertinent and contemporary at, the, at this moment in time. What we've come up with is a, is a series of policy recommendations that are applicable for both continents um, and we'll be developing a policy brief and disseminating that as part of an, you know, a concrete output from, from the workshop. The other thing we want to produce is a series of best practice guidelines linking great ape conservation to poverty alleviation. Most great ape ranges occur in areas where people are very poor. Um, the pressures on the populations and the habitat that they're in are often generated by poverty but also um, linking the poverty angle with development issues. So here in Indonesia, one of the major drivers of orangutan threat, if you like, is the expansion of um, oil palm, for example, and clearing orangutan habitat. In Africa, the pressures are more uh, focused on small-scale farmer exploitation uh, of forest and, and, ex and conversion. And so it's, it's sort of marrying these two issues, if you like, and creating some kind of policy environment. And so we'll be choosing a, a sort of series of best practice guidelines of how you integrate local livelihoods into great ape conservation. And here we are in, uh, in the Nyara Menteng area, where there are a number of uh, islands where um, orangutans are being rehabilitated with a view to them being released into the wild. And so that's, again, a very interesting perspective from the African um, situation where wild um, great ape tourism is very well developed um, and it's something that we're looking into to promoting here much more as well. So the three, the three main um, subjects we've been looking at in terms of the policy implications of great ape conservation in Africa and Asia are uh, the possibility of Red Plus, uh, co-benefits contributing towards conservation of great apes, issues of human wildlife conflict, um, and, sec and thirdly rather, um, ecotourism. So we've developed a series of policy recommendations based around those three themes. So the first, Red Plus, co-benefits include biodiversity conservation. So that could include protection of great ape habitat. So by default, if you like, um, great apes could be conserved through long-term payments to preserve carbon in high uh, biodiversity value forests. In terms of ecotourism, um, the sector is much more well developed in, in, in Africa. For example, Rwanda and Uganda uh, obtain large, uh, a large contribution of their GDP comes from uh, great ape tourism. In Rwanda, I think it's the third most important income generator and, and uh, access to foreign exchange. And in terms of human and wildlife conflict, we're looking at ways to mitigate the ways in which um, humans and great apes come together and, and uh, uh, basically are, are forced into conflict situations. And so those three pillars, if you like, will form the basis of these, these series of re policy recommendations. E ecotourism interest is, is very interesting because in Africa the ecotourism sector is very exclusive. It's, you know, it's, it's high value, you pay $500 for a, a license, it's very well controlled, the guidelines are extremely strict. Um, you're only allowed to view the, the apes for up to an hour. Um, it's very, very closely controlled, but because of that exclusivity people are willing to pay uh, a high premium. In Asia it's much more part of the mass tourism uh, industry, so people come to Indonesia and they tick a series of boxes. So if you like, you know, you, you, you do Borobudur, you do Bali, you do orangutans. And so there's less emphasis, if you like, on the exclusivity. Um, and I think, unfortunately, there are some fab fabulous places to see orangutans. Tanjung Puting, for example, here in Yaramanteng, you you're guaranteed of seeing them. And it's actually very cheap to do so. And I think there's a, a greater willingness to pay on behalf of the tourists than that is actually being exploited. So there's a lot of 
potential in the ecotourism sector in Indonesia and, and in Malaysia, for example, um, to increase revenues and make in, place more value, if you like, on the on the ecotourism sector. Bringing together practitioners, I think, is facilit facilitating that process has been the most valuable. And you can see, you know, behind the camera, you know, there are guys who practice orangutan conservation in Asia, exchanging experiences with guys who are doing the same in, in Africa. And, and that's the real value of these kind of, of workshops and seeing things in the field um, as we're doing now. In terms of future activities, I mean, we're hoping to produce this best practice guidelines, series of best practice guidelines for great ape conservation and poverty alleviation. And maybe that can be expanded to a wider remit. Um, and one thing I'm particularly interested in is this issue of Red Plus and how high biodiversity forests, which include great apes, can be included under the Red Mechanism. And perhaps as we're discussing future plans, that may be the emphasis of the next workshop between uh, uh, organised between IIED and, and C4.